Maps are a visual representation of information. The more we get to know maps, the more curious we will become about the world. In this lesson, we are going to learn that maps can show us so much more than just where to find the closest route to Chicago. There is a story behind each map, and our job as student geographers will be to uncover that story. So far, we've been exploring the thinking geographers use to analyze places and issues, as well as the tool of GPS. Another major tool used by geographers to analyze issues is maps. Maps are a visual representation of an issue or place using geospatial data. Geospatial data is information that is organized according to locations, places, regions, human environment interactions, and movement. They can be used to communicate physical information as well as human information. In this lesson, we will take a look at some of the major types of maps, as well as examples of maps that show spatial patterns of human behavior. Keep in mind, all maps are the product of a number of decisions made by the cartographer or map maker and must therefore be carefully analyzed for credibility. Here is some vocabulary to know and use. We will continue to review these terms. What terms do you already have some familiarity with? Click on the link to view a short clip that will help us to know how maps are created and used. How is GIS different from GPS? The Global Positioning System, which we learned about last week, is a US-based satellite system used to find the exact location of something on the Earth's surface. It uses satellites in orbit around the planet, each of which is controlled from tracking stations that monitor the satellites and control them when necessary. Those satellites send information down to receivers on the ground. When you're holding a GPS receiver, also known as a smartphone or other GPS compatible device, you are receiving signals from these satellites. Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, on the other hand, is not a satellite system. Instead, GIS are databases that contain multitudes of geographic data that can be layered on top of one another to make a more comprehensive map. For example, Within a GIS database that has maps of Phoenix, Arizona, you might find maps that show roads, maps that show underground water resources, maps that show surveyed minerals, maps that show restaurants, etc. GIS can compile these maps together, a process known as a mashup, to create a more useful comprehensive map that provides lots of information. You can also go to a college or trade school to learn how to use GIS, which is a growing field in our data driven economy. Simply put, geographers use GIS to map out data over an area. What are the different types of maps? Maps can be divided into two main categories, general reference maps and thematic maps. General reference maps are typically provide a wide range of geographic information about a place or region, including the locations of cities, boundaries, roads, mountains, rivers, and coastlines. Government agencies, such as the U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, make some general reference maps. The most common form of a reference map is a trail map or a road map. With reference maps, we tend to ask, what is where? And then we use the map to get to a location or gain a sense of spatial awareness for a practical purpose. Here is an example of a reference map of the state of Illinois. This map features major cities, including their populations, roads and highways, and other landmarks like bodies of water. It also shows the relative location of Illinois on a U.S. map. For what purpose? might someone use this general reference map? Two types of reference maps 
to know are political maps and topographic maps. Political maps identify locations and show boundaries between places. The example here is a political map that shows the boundaries and names of all of the counties in Illinois. Topographic maps show changes in elevation. They show all the hills and valleys in an area. Many reference maps are a combination of political information and topographic or physical information. These are used for everyone from hikers trying to choose a route to engineers trying to determine where to build highways and dams. According to this political map, what counties border Kane County? According to the topographic map, does the elevation generally increase or decrease as you move to the southern part of Illinois from St. Charles? Thematic maps. Thematic maps emphasize one theme or topic to show patterns of data about humans, organisms, or the land. Demographic data is often expressed using thematic maps in order to understand patterns, explain what is happening in places so we can solve problems. What is demographic data? Demographic or demographic data means information about a population of people. Here is an example. Thematic maps use data from GIS to show distributions over the space of the Earth. It's a lot easier to understand demographic and geospatial data when looking at a map versus looking at a spreadsheet. Thematic maps can show crop production, average income, election information, health data, where different languages are spoken, and even what kind of coffee people drink. With thematic maps, we can track patterns of data to help us answer what is happening where, so we can find out why there and why care. What are some types of thematic maps we will be using? Choropleth maps. A choropleth map shows us geospatial information with colors to represent statistical or demographic data. In this example, the map shows us that the counties that have the highest percentage of adults between the ages of 20 and 24 are symbolized by the darkest color. When we ask the question, what is happening where, we can say California has a remarkably high percentage of counties with people in their early 20s. There are also large counties in Arizona and the coastal areas with people in their early 20s. This leads us to ask why. We can then investigate those questions more deeply after looking at this data in pretty colors. What are some questions I might ask to find out more? Dot density map. Dot density map use density of dots to show statistical or demographic data. In this map, the more dense the area of dots on the map, the higher the population. When we ask what is happening where, we can say that populations are higher on the coast and in major cities of the Mid-Atlantic, West Coast, Midwest, and Southern US. To find out why there, we would need to ask more questions. What are some questions we could ask to determine why the population is higher in these areas? Proportional symbol maps. Proportional symbol maps can also give us statistical or demographic data using symbols and scale. The bigger the symbol, the higher the statistic. Knowing that this map shows population in the U.S., which city has the higher population, San Francisco, LA, or Chicago? Cartograms. In a cartogram, you will see the size of the place is re 
scaled to be proportional to the data it represents. In this cartogram, you can see that count countries are actually depicted based on the size of their organic agriculture industry. The larger the country, the larger the industry is in that country. Where is the organic agriculture industry larger than in the United States? Let's review some of the terms that we learned today. 